is history, the future mystery. This moment is the gift. Every second. So grateful that you're here, Miracle Makers. This show, I've already got tears in my eyes um, welling up because I'm so grateful the way that our creator or what created us to be in service brings into alignment the intentions that our hearts have that's showing up for me so much my name's dr sarah larson you're listening to miracle makers and we are in store for a bunch of miracles this show is particularly a gift to my miracle maker husband, Greg Larson, who is on air with us. And we're on air every week for you to be able to give to you all the tools for your mind, body, and spirit. And miracle makers, we are now um, on our website. The YouTube channel has now had over a half a million hits thanks to you guys our podcast is being shared on itunes thank you miracle makers so much for rating our itunes for sharing the podcast for sharing what we are creating for you and not only is today's show a gift to my husband it's a gift for all of you we make choices every single day. Mm. Baby, what what is it that we've been talking about lately and some of the choices? Wake up early and go to the gym and work out. <laughs> <laughs> we do do. It's funny, in the evening we're like, yeah, we're early risers and we love getting up and going to the gym. And it's like, oh, I got to go to the gym at 6 a.m. Wow, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. I'm going to fight through this resistance and I'm going to the gym and that's one of the choices that mm, we've made one, yeah. for our miracle maker bodies and mm. um as we've been talking during the weeks my dear husband has said you know as awake and as aware and as alert as i am of so many choices throughout the day the the choice of how we parent the way that we serve our community the business the one thing i still struggle with is food <laughs> we struggle with food our kids our community um i myself practice what i call the miracle makers diet and the intuitive diet and until i heard the speaker that we're about to have the nutritionist this amazing woman that's in studio with us until i heard her speak, I'd never quite found anyone else that I felt comfortable speaking to the depth of wisdom. We connected on so many things. Myself as a doctor trained in India, Ayurvedic medicine came in, my grandmother's wisdom, the ancient villages of um, Pakistan, the amazing track that I've been on with my own eating disorders and with um, healing and connecting for our miracle maker children until I heard Carrie Schaefer speaking and speaking about the choices that we make every day. I'd not fully aligned with any other teacher. And so, of course, I found her and she's um, in studio. We've been talking about the miraculous in our own lives and we'd set the intention maybe four years ago to do a show and Miracle Makers in studio, UBN, Sunset Gower Studios. We've got Carrie Schaefer. I'm just going to give you a little, uh, my name is Kari. Kari. Is slightly different. Everybody <laughs> yeah. calls me Carrie. But um, yeah, that's so beautiful. Kari Schaefer. <laughs> Welcome, Kari. So glad to be here. Thank you so Thank you. I get so excited. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I do. I get so excited. I'm like a little puppy because when my dreams and my miracles and especially when they happen, 
by serendipity. Yeah. The intention, and one of my intentions that's written up is to complete every promise that I've ever made better than expected. Wow, beautiful. And for our brief conversation in this beautiful house that we met in years ago, I'd set the intention to have you on air in my heart, maybe in conversation with you, right. to promote the nutrition, the work that I heard you doing. And lo and behold, here you here are. We, are. we, we, we discovered that in conversation today yeah, that we yeah, met that's there. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is truly amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, mm. you're so welcome. You tell us a little bit about your journey because okay. I know with every fiber of your being, you're committed to bringing transformation to the world. You're committed to being a beneficial presence for every one of your patients and your clients, and also to make clear, help people make clear choices. Yes, it's true. So I um, was diagnosed with my first health issue when I was 17. At the time, I was modeling and I was traveling the world. And um, I was given a diagnosis of something called irritable bowel, which is now quite common. But that was back in the 80s. So there wasn't a lot of information on it. We didn't have Google. You couldn't yes. look it up and, you know, get the 4 million hits that you get today if you look it up. And um, I was told by my doctors I just had to live with it. And I was also mistakenly told not to eat fiber. And so I went about my life taking uh, fiber out of my diet. And my my the disorder for me involved a lot of pain. So the, mm. the less I ate, the less pain I would have. So I, I adopted the habit of eating, you know, maybe one meal a day. And being thin was okay because of the industry I was in. So I didn't have to get the, the haranguing that a lot of girls would get from their agents about you're too, you need to lose weight, you know, all of that, get put on the tuna fish and popcorn diet that some of the agents would put their girls on. So it, it just seemed to fit. But the problem with that, what was happening was because of the low nutrition I was getting in my system, my system wasn't able to handle the toxins that it was getting exposed to and the stressors that happen in, in you know everyday life and my body became uh, more and more depleted and simultaneously more and more toxic and by the time I was 32 I could barely walk three blocks without having to take a rest I felt wow. like I had the flu every single day I was um, in constant pain I had all kinds of different um, disorders I, I you know I jokingly when you heard me speak say that I was yeah. serially sick because my body would get over one thing but then it would manifest something else because it was just really, really struggling to be well. So on that journey, um, I decided to transition and I decided to transition. I went to the library and I checked out books. Again, couldn't do internet searches then mm. on subjects I liked. And I found that every book I checked out was about the body. Yes. And so that was when I decided to go back to medical school and and uh, learn methods to help people heal naturally. And in my first nutrition class, I learned that I was eating enough calories basically to starve to death. And that was when I really started understanding, okay, food makes a difference. Yeah. And it's been through my, my years of working with people. I've been in practice for 16 years. And through my years of working with people that I have seen time and again that what we're putting in our bodies not only creates the environment for healing, but also, unfortunately, in our food system nowadays can be the source of the sickness because we have so altered our food. So I work with a system in the body to, to, to be able to, I think the body's amazing, right? It's, Talk about a miracle yeah. maker. Oh, it yeah. is a miracle, right? Yeah. It is and a I, miracle. A double-stranded DNA that turns into um, a fertilized og ovum that turns into right. more um, cells than stars in our Milky Way right. that then turns into processes. Our heart beats so often every day without our input, our lungs. It's an amazing what we're capable of doing. A thought is faster than the speed of light. Right. Yes. Right. So, so amazing, right? Just yeah. so amazing. And I really believe that bodies do miracles constantly. Yes. And one of the things they're always doing and that they're programmed to do is heal. 
Yes. Right. So if something if they're not healing, it's because something's blocking them from healing. And so my entire practice is designed around identifying the things that are blocking a body from doing what it innately does, which is heal. Right. So I when when I started, I, I have a system where I'm able to identify stressors on the body and people are coming in and I'm seeing food dyes and, you know, um, um, other chemicals or, you know, somebody will test for a heavy metal. And I'll say, what did you do in the last few days? And they're like, oh, well, I had you know, tuna fish for dinner. And yeah. I started seeing the correlations between the choices we were making every day mm. and what was going on in our body. And that really led me to do more and more research about what's going on with our food system. And, you know, diet is not the only answer to health because yes. you've touched on some things. You know, our thoughts are super, super important. Our emotional body is super, super important, right? Our soul's journey is super important to yeah. our vibrancy and our health. However, if we are... Um, if we are are not aligned with choices that are actually nourishing our body, then we're going to take these bodies and lower the vibration in the system. And, and going out in the world and being the best we can be becomes almost impossible. We were mm. gifted these amazing bodies that are capable of so much. Yes. And we're, right now, if we're in the United States, we're in a country where we have a lot of freedom of choice every single day. You go to a grocery store and lining the shelves are this beautiful, amazing choices. Everywhere you go, we are in the land of plenty. Yes. And in this land of plenty, one of the things that's happening is we are at the mercy of what is in those products and what has been labeled. And since the 50s, since the 50s, there have been more chemicals made with very mm. interesting names designed to um, make us crave the food that it yes. has been added to. Those chemicals are an amazing part of our everyday lives now. Yes. And um, you're, what you shared there, I want to just uh, tap in on a little bit. As a model, as a young lady, you were doing and your body was coping with yes. what it was given from the environment. Yes. You were actually being rewarded for eating the way that you were eating. And your body was, there's the body, there's the mind, and there's the spirit. The body was compensating yes. um, for these choices that were made. Yes. And your mind was trying and successfully looking up things and understanding, not necessarily had you connected it yet, that what you were doing with your body, your mind went out searching for this is what I'm interested in. Signals from your body were being sent out. You were tired in your 30s. You became a medical doctor, went to med school in order to really understand and be congruent with the things that your advisors were telling you to understand what your body, what was happening in your body. Right. Tell us more about this, this journey. Well, I didn't actually go to med school, uh, 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 what, what we call Western med school. I went to Chinese medical Me school, right? right? Because part of my journey was I had gone to medical doctors and they gave, and yeah. because I wanted to know I didn't have some horrible disease, right? Yeah. Um, but once I found out that I didn't, they didn't really have solutions for me. So that's why yeah. I went down the road of the more natural medicine, right? Yeah. But one of the things I actually found was what was going on in my system, because like you said, you know, we're sort of at an evolutionary threshold right now for the human body. The human body um, is um, has never been exposed to the number of chemicals that it's being exposed to. So like you said, in the last 100 years, um, we are now exposed to over 95,000 different chemicals in our environment. 
Um, we're exposed to over 14,000 chemicals in our food, and over 3,000 of them you will never find on the label of your food. So you don't know that they're in there. And um, so these bodies are being exposed to chemicals. Chemicals were, were not designed, were not evolutionarily developed to use chemicals to create health and vibrancy. And I actually believe that human bodies will adapt to be able to live in harmony with chemicals because I don't think they're necessarily going away. However, we are sort of this forefront and, and, and a lot of bodies don't know how to deal with them. And my body was one of the ones that did not know how to deal with them. And so I became what I call a highly sensitive person where I was sensitive to multiple foods and I was sensitive to multiple chemicals and I had to really be careful about where I went and when and what I did otherwise I would make myself sick again you know or even that, sicker yeah right so we we so people don't most people don't realize to the extent that this is going on and they're just they're not feeling well or they're getting god forbid cancer I mean the statistics on cancer are so scary right or their skin is having to process right um, it's showing up as eczema Most. or psoriasis exactly or skin cancer right um because there are different systems in our body that's required to take care of our toxins, yeah. our toxins. Yeah, pe most people don't realize that your skin is one of your biggest organs of detoxification, right? Yes. So we're we're putting these things in. We think we're doing a good job. Even if we think we're doing a good job, we don't realize that that piece of meat we're eating probably has somewhere around 20-something chemicals in it. You know, We just yeah. don't know. And the information isn't out, read, out there and readily available. And these chemicals, like I said, they have a different vibration than the vibration that human bodies, when they're well, um, right. thrive at, right? And so these chemicals are literally dropping our vibration. And so a lot of, you know, a lot a lot of the people that we know are really doing a lot to try to elevate their consciousness and they're eating all these things that are that are literally holding their body down and in 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 you know worst case scenarios making themselves actually sick right so right. it becomes super important to start to understand about this and to start to educate ourselves so that we can make different choices. You know, there's all these diets out there that this is the miracle diet and this is the miracle diet. And you and I yeah. are very much in alignment that the miracle diet is the diet that was created by the miraculous process of life, right? Yes. It's eating the foods as they were, were given to us in nature, in their natural form. That's the miracle diet. And it doesn't really matter so much if you choose to be vegetarian or you choose to be vegan or even if you choose to eat meat. As long as what you're eating meets the nutrient needs of the body, you're getting enough protein, you're getting healthy fats, and you're keeping the chemicals out, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the premise for the, what the food solution is about. Yeah. It's like sort of step-by-step -step teaching you how to do that so that... This Your book is called The, the Food, Food Solution. Solution. Yeah. And we met where you were talking about it to a group of um, ladies first Tuesday, uh, just a powerful group of women that meet in Los Angeles. And the what you shared, not only did you get up and share your own personal stories about how changing the choices and going to medicine, uh, Chinese medical school, mm -hmm. TCM, um, traditional Chinese medicine, and then finding these processes happening all around Los Angeles, there is such a huge need for it. I think you said we're spending $88,000 a minute on diet food products. Yeah, I read that yesterday in a study, and I, I, I haven't had time to look and verify it, yeah. but, but, you know, $88,000 per second. Per second, not even per, per minute. No, per, per second, second uh, right? $88,000 right. per second on weight loss stuff, yes. on things that are, pertain to weight loss. Well, one of the things people don't realize is these chemicals in the body act as what we call xenoestrogens. Yes. And estrogen is the hormone that promotes plumpness. It's what makes a woman a, you know, a, what we yes. love about women. It's the plumpness, <laughs> right? So people are eating these chemicals and it's telling their body to make fat, make fat, yeah. make fat, except it's affecting us in not healthy ways. It's not 
a healthy form of estrogen. It's a form of estrogen yeah. that promotes breast cancer and promotes ovarian cancer and even breast cancer in men. Mm -hmm. You're seeing little children nowadays that are actually developing breasts, even little boys, you know, and that's from yeah. all this overload of chemical exposure that's going in and disrupting our hormonal system. And so I, I want to talk solutions as yeah, well as totally. when we're talking about this because yes there are all of these chemicals yes our bodies are miracles in yes. themselves yes there is a miracle maker diet and the miracle maker diet is if it looks natural in its form the more natural it is garden fresh connecting with your farmers and part of the solution is Foods that are bought and wrapped in plastics, plastics, which we've heard about quite a bit now for maybe 30 years. Right. It's been out there. John Hopkins did some studies on it. Plastics wind up mimicking the estrogens and not even the BPA free stuff completely clears you of the chemicals. Right. There's still chemicals in that. It, we've got a young um, nine-year-old boy that we just adore. He's nine right now. He loves sports. And we are so careful to make sure that he doesn't get um, fruits, vegetables, water, meats surrounded in plastic. Right. That he doesn't have that experience going into his body. Right. So many women, young ladies, we have an 11-year-old, beautiful, amazing, jazzy, who is, um, and we want to make sure she follows the natural rhythm of her body rather than developing hormonally sooner. Yes. When you're not eating what I would call the miracle makers, the ones, the trees are miracles, the plants, the bushes are miracles. Even connecting with a farmer that's loved its animals, its chickens yes. and its cows yes. is a miracle. Yes. And we tend to get our meat, the bison meat. We knew the farmer we um, f and they come into a farmer's market on a regular basis. Right. If you're hearing this and you're hearing our voices or you're watching this, what are some of the practices that you have? Because out there, you can Google the 95,000 chemicals that have been created in the last 100 years. Right. But to really get present to what are the choices that you make. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the, the simple ways for people, and, and in Southern California, this is easy, and I know this is going out way beyond that, yeah. but is buying from, you already said, you know your farmer. So finding either at farmer's markets, if you have them in your area, or perhaps even online nowadays, we have things called Consumer Supported Agriculture CSAs, yes. where you can have actually delivered to your home produce that has been raised by people who understand this right and who are really they love their food it's a big commitment you're not necessarily getting super rich off of growing this type of food the people that do this it is a labor of love and yeah. so by making the extra effort to source out these sources of food that are low in, in chemicals you know once you get to know your your grower or your farmer you and you 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 get to know their heart then you don't have to worry about about it, right? And by buying from them, you're actually supporting them to do this for the planet. So mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the choices that you're making because you're making choices that are supporting you, your health. You're making choices that are supporting your children's health. You're making choices that aren't harming the farm workers. And you're supporting the people that are making this their passion, right? And their life, their livelihood. And so that's why I call it the food solution because it's not just a solution for your health when we make these choices. It's a solution for the whole problem the whole system and and ultimately the planet right ultimately the planet mm -hmm. there are more chemicals than our planet knows what to do with yeah long after we're gone these yes. physical forms cease to exist as they are now what the, our children and we say this often on the show our kids inherit this earth 
And there have been bodies that are so toxic, they can't be buried the normal ways based on the bacterials, based on the chemicals, based on the therapies that they've been exposed to. And um, Chinese medicine, 5,000-year-old science, Ayurvedic, Indian medicine, 5,000-plus years old as well, the Chinese physicians that took care of the emperors got to live like kings as long as the emperor was, was well. well. <laughs> and, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and when the emperor wasn't well, yeah. it was an amazing... Th- um, that's uh, the, d- the doctors, their physicians, also had to experience what the emperors were experiencing. And when the emperor died... So did his doctors. Doctor. And just imagine the level of commitment you have as a right. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And those yes. traditions, yeah. traditional Chinese medicine tradition was birthed, written down, and passed on wisdom and knowledge from doctor to doctor, emperor financed right. uh, books and right. a collection of you have meridians within your body. You have electrical systems that are so beautiful and amazing that can do so many things when you're in alignment with nature. Yes. And so I want to sort of pivot a little bit because off air we talked about one of your stories about meeting your husband. Yes, yeah. And I um, have so many girlfriends and guy friends that have not yet connected with their beloveds. Mm. And I found that sharing that you did so miraculous yes. because you're you're tuning in, you're doing the processes, you're in alignment with yourself and you weren't looking for a relationship. You were at a party. This is the party that we met in. Yes. Um, probably about four years ago, five maybe years ago. five mm-hmm. years ago. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, I had, um, as I, I told you, when, you know, before we were on air, I was 45 years old, and I, um, it was the only birthday I'd ever had that I was a little sad around. Usually I love my birthdays. I was a little sad because there's this little voice in the back of my head, you know, a woman who's 45 years old has a better chance of getting hit by a train than meeting a, you know, getting married. And and being in partnership was always something that I wanted. But I'd sort of learned to release the the search for it because I have sort of had lost the belief that it was going to happen, um, and it was going to happen in. Um, anyway, that was really magical. So here I am at this gathering in Ojai, and it was a, quite an amazing gathering on a lunar eclipse. Yes. And um, I, a friend of ours said, I have somebody you have to meet. And she introduced me to this gentleman, and we hugged. And in that hug was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and if you hear him talk about it, he says that the moment that we hugged, a voice in his says in his head said, this is the woman I'm going to spend my life with. Now, he was coming off of a 17-year marriage and had, he was four months out of a 17-year marriage and he had no plans on doing anything like this, right? (laughs) And so throughout the evening, we just kept sort of running into each other. There's this super funny story. It's a little embarrassing. But at one point, he was sitting and talking with this lady, and I came and I sat next to him, and I said, oh, is it okay if I'm here? And, And he's like, sure. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I have no, this is not me. I scooched over, and I sat in his lap. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, wait, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is this okay? He's like, yeah, it's totally fine. And by uh, the end of the gathering, um, I was leaving, and he comes up to me to say goodbye, and he grabs his chest, and he goes, oh, my goodness, I just wanted to tell you that I loved you. And I was like, yeah, I had those thoughts a few hours ago. Uh, it was really nice meeting you. And I ran out the door because you know, I was totally convinced that I was having some psychological process because this just did not happen. You know? yes. And our, um, our, our first date uh, happened about a week later. He had his kids and it was, you know, newly out of uh, a marriage. So we were being gentle around that process. And um, the first date, we spent three days together and he proposed on the third day 
and proposed to me every day for the next year until I finally <laughs> said, just propose to me when you know I'm going to say with a completely full heart, yes, er in every moment. Um, and I was always a yes, but you know how sometimes yeah. you're kind of in a little different mood. Right. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, last year in September, we were married in Italy. And uh, it's been a really beautiful, beautiful mm. process. And it has completely renewed my um, faith in the process of falling in love. And actually at our first New Year's Eve together was again at a gathering at that same house. And people were coming up to us because they could see our glow and asking us to bless them and oh, asking wow. us to bless that they would meet somebody in the new year. Yeah. So. Oh, that is so beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. Dear miracle makers, mm. just know that stay on your path and stay very much open to possibilities and it will drop in and a little voice will whisper um what is yours by divine right is yours it will it cannot be withheld from you as long as you're on your miracle path yeah. and then the other and voice will say i'm having a psychological breakdown right, right. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I, I say it's wise to wait a year, uh, two, to really get to know someone. And you shared that it took four years yes, we got year before you got married. Four and a half years. Four ago. and a half, mm -hmm. even though you have this voice three days within a proposal. Dear beautiful woman or man, hearing this, when your partner is sharing that, go through all the seasons yes. together before you put in that commitment because part of it is you learn so much more when you're in possibility. Yes. And when you commit, have that commitment from a full space of knowing this person, at least through all the seasons. Yes. And um, my husband and I had a miraculous meeting, which is what led us into the conversation earlier ab about your relationship and the miracles just continuing on this path of miracles, I know that you shared about this eight-year-old boy mm -hmm. that came into your clinic and the what happened for him. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite stories. Uh, there's been lots of different miracles that I've seen over the years, particularly there's, there's miracles through uh, with adults as well as the children. The children just, it happens faster, so it seems you, you yeah. recognize the miracle more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this eight-year-old boy came in, and he his mother would drive two hours to see me on the recommendation of another client um, that um, would bring her, her, her son in to see me. And he was uh, severely ADD to the point that he couldn't sit still and he didn't have language. Da, da, da was his, his only language. And he would repeat that repeatedly. And he would run around my office because I, I asked the mothers not to um, stop them from their natural behavior. So A, I can, can witness it. And B, um, they feel, the children feel comfortable because if they're constantly getting reprimanded, who's going to want to go hang out someplace, right? Yeah. And I need them to want to hang out with me. So there he's running around and he's body slamming my 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 table in my office and he's da 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 and he's running around and the mom's mm. sitting there you know trying hard not to say anything and um we go we go about the process of helping him and, and one of the things we identified on in him is that he had a lot of food reactions and again probably coming yeah. from eating these foods that had these chemicals attached to them but a lot of different food reactions we identified chemicals that were affecting him we identified some heavy metals that were affecting him we identified some old immune challenges that weren't resolved that were affecting him and over the you know over months yeah. um, they lived so far away that I didn't I, I didn't see them that often because you know it was a big journey for them but he he would come in and he'd get a little better and 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 he would regress and back and forth but one day after about three months of working together he walks into my office and he looks at me and he says hello Kari oh, that's nice so to see you beautiful right? eight years old eight years old and it was the first time in his life that he was able to articulate in full sentences I just stood there tears were running down my face yeah. I mean oh. what a gift what a gift what a gift to be able to support a beautiful young being to yeah. being able to find 
his ability to function in the world, you know, to be uh, free, uh, because the mind can get locked up. Yes. And um, to be and free it to express. It's so beautiful because in this world that we're living in, the chemicals, the 95,000 chemicals, 14,000 of which are in food, 3,000 of which are not labeled. Right. Every day, Mama, Papa, you're going to the store and you're making a choice. And our children, whether even from the whole food type places, the organic labeled foods are not necessarily on the miracle makers or the pure diet, the yes. food choices, the true choices. Yes. And those chemicals have to be the chemicals that are in this bag labeled organic or labeled natural or labeled in a manner, whether it's canned uh, or in a plastic container, it gets into your child's body. And there are certain places that are more susceptible to receive it. The brain, especially if it's connected with sugar or carbs, mm -hmm. the um, the brain is and the eyes very very susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. You also have with the fats and the toxins, um, a lot of organs, especially our skin, winds up having to clear those. Our lungs are amazing. And our liver, the same thing that our liver does, our lungs do, do to some extent. Mm -hmm. That's why meditation and yoga are so important for helping to process what foods you put into your body. But the number one choice, mama, papa, to your own body, even if you don't have children, when you put something in with food coloring, yes, you are now putting actively a chemical that's going to go into your brain and have to be processed mm -hmm. or into one of the fatty tissues, your nervous system, mm -hmm. one of those, everything that you eat gets cut up, digested, sent into your bloodstream, and it goes to the process um, that's easiest for it to reach. So if you happen to be exercising right after you eat, it's going to deposit in your skin because that's where the blood flow is going to go. Mm -hmm. It's going to go to your hands, to your knuckles, to those joints. You're going to have psoriasis or echinacea or one of the other ways, a mild form, until your body can no longer process, process it. it. Right. And our children are particularly sensitive. Yes, they are particularly sensitive. And... A three-month process of eating healthy and going through and learning the processes took an eight-year-old boy with no language, da, 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 mm -hmm. to being able to speak in full sentences. Yes. What a miracle maker. Totally miracle. Yeah. Right. What a miracle. Complete, what a miracle maker you are for that. Miracle. Yeah. I had another young boy with um, that was diagnosed with Asperger's. And they've 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 taken that diagnosis out, but it, it was basically saying that you were sort of a little bit autistic. And um, he uh, his mom brought him in to me because she had had some great successes, and, and her daughter had a, a, a beautiful beautiful story yeah. with her healing process. And within a year of changing his diet, because basically that's what we did with him. We didn't do anything yeah. other than changing his diet of him eating whole foods instead of eating the you know the the, the sweet sugary cereals and the fast foods and the, you know, this kind of standard American teenage diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He went from being the sort of team mascot that sat on the side of the pool to being the um, star athlete and the captain of the team. And this is a child who, again, was diagnosed with Asperger's, who, who had difficulty recognizing social cues. And now he's actually the, the, the lead of all of these young men you know mm. such an amazing transformation which is so incredible and um uh, it's amazing for us because uh, with the work that we do as well yeah. these miracle stories come in not only with children but 
the elderly. Yes. I had an RN who was on um, four lung medications, steroids included, and slowly through the process, and what we changed for her was her water Interesting. and her thoughts, wow. her water and nurturing herself and giving love to herself and slowing down her body. Right. She was an RN, and it was really interesting because she'd retired from that. Um, and she moved out here to Los Angeles to work with me. Lo and behold, after she went off the four medications, off of all of the processes, and simply by changing her water, changing her thoughts, she's now an energy healer that went through four years of schooling with Barbara Brennan School. Wow, and she heals with energy medicine. Yes. What's really important, which I really thought was so beautiful when you and I met, was the conversation around alkaline water. Yes. And it's one of um, one of the most important choices we make every day. We're drinking water constantly. Our body needs it. Yes. To at least two thirds of us is water. And so until you and I talked, I had not met another healthcare professional that had that same philosophy about alkaline water. So I'd love for you to just share. Yeah. So one of the, the tools that I use, because there's new things all the time, and how do we figure out what's good for us and what isn't good for us? So one of the tools that I use, because I'm really committed to the do no harm, is if you, um, it, it, I ask three questions. And one of the questions is, is it in alignment with the laws of nature? So when it came to alkaline water, I had to get online and look up what is the natural pH of spring water. And the natural pH of spring water is 7.5. So alkaline water is, is has has pH about 8.5. Some of them even recommend nine, which are very, very, very high pH. And so I did. I based on that alone, I did not recommend it to my um, my clients. Then I started having people come in to see me. I had a pregnant woman come in. She was anemic. She had just gotten out of the hospital for kidney stones, yeah. and she had severe acid reflux. And when I looked at the choices she was making, one of the choices she was making was alkaline water. Well, when you're drinking a solution that has a high pH like that. Your stomach is supposed to be very acidic. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a pH of one or yeah. two or three when you have food in there. And you're drinking this solution of this very high pH, you know, 8.59 water, you're actually disenabling the digestive process. And you need a very low pH in order to absorb things like minerals. So you can literally make yourself mineral deficient like this woman was doing. And then you've got all this extra mineralization in this water and the body can't absorb it. And because a, you don't have the acid in your system to do it, but your body can't absorb it, so it ends up in your urinary system creating kidney stones. Yes. And so she was one of the first where I was like, oh, this is my, this was, so I took her off the water, and I initially gave her extra iron because she was anemic and retested her, and then her iron levels were too high. I had to take her back off, right? Yeah. Her body now was able to absorb the, the, uh, the nutrients from her whole food prenatal she was taking and from the food she was eating. She didn't need extra, and the anemia went away, right? You need an acidic environment to absorb iron. You do. You need, you need an, an acidic, acidic environment. environment. If you are anemic or if you're feeling low energy right. that's a sign uh, one of the signs yes and to not eat um, and drink at the same time allows your stomach pH to right. be consistent yeah. to digest the food and um, to absorb the iron. Right. So when your stomach pH isn't the right pH, whether it's from the water or whatever reason, it it has a whole cascade effect in the digestive system. And yes. that cascade effect creates an environment for unhealthy microorganisms to grow in our digestive system, for us to experience bloating or constipation or, or loose bowels. It, it kind of sets off a whole cascade 
cascade. So, so putting in this water that is this high pH completely just throws off the natural flow of what your digestive system is needing in order for it to be healthy. Again, going back to the, when you look at how we're designed, it again, it's such a miracle, right? Yes. And then sometimes in the name of trying to help ourselves, we start messing with it and we create a bigger problem. And I actually believe that alkaline water is one of those areas in which we are actually creating a bigger problem by what we're trying to do to help ourselves. Yes. Just like in the, in mm. the I think it was the 80s that distilled water was the yeah. craze, right? Well, distilled water, they eventually figured out, was leaching minerals from the body and yeah. creating other health issues, right? Initially, when mm. distilled water came online, it was important because we needed to pull out toxins right. and there weren't other ways Thanks to pull it yes. at the time. Now it, uh, we're not getting enough minerals from our food and right. from our diet right. and the distilled water um, because Bragg's was a big proponent. One of the first health movement gurus was really all about distilled, distilled water. water. Right. And that was because there was lead in some of the water. There was other right. from the well water. Right. And so just to give that a full picture right. there, it's so important. If you're, if you have kidney stones, if you have gout, even in your toes, pain in your toes, that in your joints, it's the the balance of alkaline versus acidic in your body that can make a major difference. Yeah, and so using distilled water as a medicine is great. Yeah. Using it as a life practice yes. is where we create the problem. Same with alkaline. There are I I know there are cases where people alkaline water have really helped people because it was the right medicine for what they had going on. Right. It doesn't mean it's the right medicine across the board yes. for everybody. So if you're going to do it, you want to be using it as medicine and then knowing that it has a, a, a shelf life. When that imbalance is balanced out in your body, yes. now it's time to go back to the, the, the law of nature. And I would also add to that Working with a healthcare professional, yes. Kari, or um, bringing in someone who can really monitor yes. what, um, whether you need to be on alkaline or not. Yes. And some of the different ways that it's distributed don't take into account yes. the whole health picture. Exactly. Yes. And our, so I would love to go back to the other two questions. You said, I love these questions, and you shared these during the talk, which was beautiful. Is it in alignment with nature? And then the second question was, are all my healthy friends doing it? Yes. And has it been done for more than a generation so that we know the effect it has on our offspring? Yes. And so because I, I, I don't really want to use my clients as guinea pigs. I don't want to be trying the latest and greatest new thing only to find out that it's actually a problem. So BPA, um, BPA plastic was the solution to yeah. pat plastics with phthalate. And then we find out that BPA plastic is a problem. So yeah. I say no to all plastics now because we don't know what they're using and whether that's going to be considered a problem later. Right. So I, those are the yeah. three. It's a, it, it, so with alkaline water, my healthy friends were all doing it, but it wasn't in alignment with nature, and we hadn't been doing it for multiple, multiple generations to know the effect. So it was a no for me, and that's it's why I said no. And so for uh, Miracle Makers, I'm going to repeat those. Is it in alignment with nature, I would say, is the biggest question. Yes. If you don't see it happening in nature, really, really um, go back right. to the drawing board for looking for another solution. solution. Are all your healthy friends doing it? And we all need those a village around us. Right. The health food store usually has someone there that can answer questions, but please don't limit it to that one person. Right. Friends, multiple. Yes. The, um, thank God for Google, because that's a really great place. Build a resource of trusted. Uh, um, Kari, your website is beautiful. The Sustainable Health website, so many tools on that. Dr. Sarah Larson, we've got so many tools. Right. We've got previous podcasts as well right. to really, really help you be in alignment, mind, body, and spirit. Are your healthy friends doing it? Right. And then the generation question is beyond belief. So important. Yes. 
uh, the sins or the mistakes is another way to say that. I, that's the way that I look at that word. Yes. The, the areas that we made mistakes in are visited upon our children. Yes. And I, I break down the word mistakes into mistakes. Takes, right. Mistakes. Mm. Right. We're all really doing the best we can for our kids, yes. for ourselves. If we truly could do better, we I would, know yeah. we would be doing yes. better. And that's one of the things that you can say to yourself, miracle makers, when to eliminate the emotional stress and the physical stress and the environment. We didn't get a chance to visit that topic right? at all. Yeah, no, that's a really yeah. important one because mm. the guilt around what you're doing is probably much worse for you than the actual doing of it. Of so it. do your best, yes. get educated about it, make the choices, and then and then let it go, yes. right? Let it go because the worry is just as harmful as anything else, any other choice we could make. Carrie, how did those that are listening find you? Um, my website is sustainablehc.com and they can look me up there and I wanted to give a, a, an offer to people because I at First Tuesday, in the book, we talk about, I talk about a way to help you detox your diet, help you clean up the diet that you're eating. Yes. And there's an audio that goes with that that's super, super helpful for people um, that goes along with the book. And so if any of your listeners in the next day or two would like to email us through the website, you, you know, again, yes. sustainablehc.com. Um, uh, just email my, us and say that you would like a copy of the audio that goes with the diet detox, and, and we're happy to send it to you. Put a link to your newsletter, that audio, on our website. We we'll, oh, we'll do that when we blog this out oh, for beautiful. you. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, we send this out in a newsletter. And okay. so, if you're signed up for the Dr. Sarah Larson newsletter, that's one of the many gifts oh, that you good. get. And good. Kari, I'm so grateful. You're saying that they can get it from your website by simply emailing. Just emailing that you, you know, would you would like, like a copy of the audio version of the 21 day diet detox um, support um, calls. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. 21 days diet detox. Diet they just detox. did say I, I heard you on Dr. Sarah Lawrence and Larson, excuse me, and and we'll know what they're why they're beautiful. emailing. Yeah, just mention you and it's fine. Okay, we'll happily, beautiful. happily share. That with and then them. we're going to send that out to everybody that's already signed up on our newsletter oh, when we um, put this out. Great. And yeah. so we'll put a link to you. Oh my gosh, thank you so You're much welcome. for You're being welcome. on this yes, and for helping us really co create. Dear Miracle Makers, be on the Miracle Maker diet. And that being smell your food before you eat it. The smelling of your food lets the digestive juices start. Then chew your food, and hopefully it looks like it exists in nature. Yes. And then going into and really being, allowing your acidity in your stomach to partner with you to digest it. And taking your time as you're eating to be with your food. Mm. That's the Miracle Makers Diet. There'll be more on our website Beautiful. about it. Is there anything you'd love to add, baby? Health is very important. Health is very important. Being a miracle maker, yeah. For being a miracle maker. Our family motto is be strong to be useful. Our intention is to be useful to ourselves, to our family, to our world. So. And before the show, Car, you said, align with the grace that created you. And everything you've said today is critical in aligning with the grace. There is a force in the universe that created you. And we're messing with it by adding all these chemicals. We're killing that force that's created you by adding all these chemicals. So very, very important to be a miracle maker and align with that grace. Through your food choices Through as your well. Food choices, yeah, it yeah. creates the foundation yeah. that allows us to then go out in the world and do our and do our grace. Yes. You know? Do yes. make make miracles. That's right. That's so. right. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. We look so forward much. to spending more time. Yes. With you. Yay, thank you so much. You, thank you so much for having me. You're, it's really a so pleasure. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. The past is history. The future mystery. This moment.